Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our time of worship this morning. In case you're all confused, I'm over here. I'm not on the platform, I know. That's a bit confusing. Uh, welcome if you're visiting us. My name's Kevin, and I'm the pastor here. And I'm also doubling up on the piano today, hence being down on the floor. Um, and if you're online, it's great to have you with us. Uh, as with all age services, uh, we seek to try and engage uh, people at different levels, uh, and so there's always going to be something uh, which uh, won't suit you, and we hope there's definitely something which will uh, suit you, and as we uh, gather as family, we seek to wrestle with that and to worship together, because that's important. Uh, we've got a few uh, activities that we'll be doing, and those guys on Zoom, if you want to use uh, the chat box, we'll try and then uh, move the stuff across from chat to whatever we do uh, in the room so that you're uh, part of that as well. Another thing to think about, uh, whenever uh, we go to do anything with our kids, uh, we often have to explain stuff to them. Uh, that's not because uh, uh, the person at the front maybe isn't getting it right, it's because everyone needs different ways of explaining things and so it's okay if you need to lean over if you need to explain to your kids what's going on in the way that they will understand, that's absolutely fine. Please don't uh, think anything of doing that. We want them to be as engaged as they can be. Just a couple of pieces of uh, family news at the start. Um, we've been praying for uh, two members of our congregation, uh, Nick and Helen. Uh, Nick's been very unwell. Uh, and the good news is that he's now been transferred from Scotland back to Birmingham. Uh, he is in a room there, and Helen is back in her home. And so that's a really positive uh, thing, and she wanted me to thank you so much for your love and prayers uh, over this time, and obviously uh, let us continue praying uh, for Nick's recovery. And also to say on Tuesday, uh, please pray for us. We are partnering with Cross Teach to put on an a, uh, event talking about transition, so changing from year six uh, to year seven. And looking at Bible characters and thinking, well, what did that look like uh, for them? Who did they rely on? That's the underlying message. And a few of us are going to be here working with Cross Teach, doing some drama -y kind of stuff, engaging with Cotonen's Year Sixes. Uh, so uh, the building will be out of bounds uh, to anyone who's not on that event from up until one o'clock. Uh, so uh, please, if you can honour that, that would be great. Uh, but otherwise, please be praying for us uh, and that they will hear of uh, the great news of who God is and how he can be their helper uh, too. As we uh, gather in this place today, we're going to start by uh, singing a call to worship, which says, come, now is the time to worship. If you're able, uh, please stand with me.
do sit down. And Psalm 105 tells us, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Give praise to the Lord. That's what we want to uh, be doing uh, this morning, and I I want to invite you uh, to participate. So we've got a a short sentence, uh, which I'd love you to complete for us, if we have it on the screen. There we go. It's very simple. It says, thank you, Jesus. And and Jonathan's got a uh, a, a mic he's going to roam around with. So because we've got people online, uh, we need to obviously make sure they can hear us well. Uh, So... Uh, how would you complete the sentence, thank you, Jesus? The, this is a, these are words of praise. These are our prayers. Uh, so wave your hand in the air, and let's uh, get started with uh, praising Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for a new day. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for friends and family. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Hmm. Over there, Jonathan. Thank you, Jesus, for your amazing time provision for a mum in need for baby basics this week. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for football. Thank you, Jesus, for my family. Thank you, Jesus, for caring for me. Thank you, Jesus, for this church and this community of people. And thank you, Jesus, for answering prayers. Thank you, Jesus, for always being there. Hmm. And thank you, Jesus, for your healing power. And thank you, Jesus, for encouragement when it is needed. Thank you, Jesus, that we uh, can praise you and we can worship you in this place. Amen. Recently, we did a, a series of God is, which is on the wall. We won't be able to see uh, online, but it remind us that God is love. And God's love is for everything that he has made. He loves you and he loves me. And Jesus shows us by his life and tells us in his own words that God will never turn away from anyone who comes to him. However, we do know our lives are far from perfect, don't we? We know that with our best intentions in the world, uh, we don't always do the things that God has asked us to do. That word sin has spoiled our lives and God's world. Now sin, remember, is that that deliberate choice that we make, that selfish thing, that selfish stuff that we do, which saddens God. and, And we're all guilty of this. But God accepts us as we are, but loves us too much to leave us in that place. And that's why it's important that although we know we're forgiven and we're held securely in his hands, we also say sorry regularly for those things which keep turning up as he continues to grow us. In the Bible it tells us if we confess our sins to God, he will keep his promise and do what is right. He will forgive us our sins and purify us from all our wrongdoing. And so I want to lead us in a prayer where we are going to say sorry for uh, various aspects of our lives. And it involves uh, some physical movements. And if you want to do them, if you find that helpful, you're very welcome. Uh, If not, uh, then you may just want to sit uh, quietly with your eyes closed. But I will show you the move and I will talk about it before we do it. So I want to invite you first to make a fist. Lord, we are sorry for the times we have got angry with other people. Let's point away from ourselves. Loving God, we are sorry for the times we have blamed others and seen the wrong in others 
without recognising how much is also wrong in us. Make a fist and hold it to our chest. Gracious God, we are sorry for the times we have kept things selfishly to ourselves and not been prepared to give to those who need our help. And place a hand over our mouths. Lord, we're sorry for the foolish words we have spoken which have hurt other people. Our hands on our eyes. We are sorry that we have deliberately chosen not to see good things we could have done to help other people or make better choices. Place our hands on one ear. Loving God, we are sorry for the times we have not listened to the cries of those who are poor or those who suffer injustice. And just in a pause, privately in your heart, name something that you want to say sorry for before God right now. If we confess our sins to God, he will keep his promise and do what is right. He will forgive us our sins and purify us from wrongdoing. I invite you to put your hands in front of you and open. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for us so that we might be forgiven and start a new life filled with the power of of the Holy Spirit. And as we receive that forgiveness now, I want you to use one of your hands to draw a cross on the other palm to remind yourself of what Jesus has done for you, how much love he has poured out for you upon that cross, how you are forgiven. Because what gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer. If you're able, do stand. What gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness.
Amen. Do you sit down? In this country, we're really uh, blessed to have God's Word in written form, online, in so many ways. We can have it as an audible. Uh, it's great, isn't it, that we can engage with it. Uh, and we can read about the amazing things that God uh, does. And what we're going to do is, before you open your Bibles, we're going to take a moment to see what jumps to your mind that is amazing for you that Jesus did. So what's amazing in your mind that, that Jesus did, or perhaps something you heard about in the Bible that God did through somebody else? What stories do you remember? Okay, take a couple of moments to talk to someone uh, nearby, uh, to do a bit of uh, prompting of your brain, and then we'll get the mic moving. And again, post online if you've got some, and we'll uh, share those ideas. What stories do we know? Okay, let's see, keep going, that'd be great. Molly, you do a running. Great, so uh, give us a wave of uh, a hand. We don't need the whole story retelling, the, the headline of, of the story, okay? So hands in the air, there must be, I hope, lots of stories that uh, strike us. God help Daniel not get hurt by the lions. Right, Daniel and the lion's den, yeah. Okay, what else we got? It's that Jesus started out by calling very ordinary fishermen to join his band of disciples. Yeah, thank you. Okay, over to Jenny. We've got one online. The, the man called Legion, who Jesus healed of his evil spirits. The story of the prodigal son. Yeah, what forgiveness. Yeah. The lady in the Old, old Testament, when the old jail kept filling up. When the... The oil, the jar of oh, oil. Oh, the oil jar, which kept yeah. refilling yes. over and over. Just enough. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Rachel down here. That Jesus sacrificed his life for us and still forgives us and loves us. Yeah, that is amazing. Absolutely. That Jesus accepts those who are different... Jairus' daughter. Jairus' daughter. Yeah, absolutely. Brought back, healed. When Jesus, and when Jesus um, doesn't want you to sin against him and his promise for the world. Okay, so Noah's Ark. Is that what you said yeah. at the start? Yeah. Noah's Ark. Yeah. A couple more. Jesus walking on the water. Jesus walking on the water. Yeah. Sorry, I repeat these sometimes because I can't hear them. I'm making sure I've heard right. Uh, he knows us through and through and yet still loves us. There we are. That's a good one to, to land on. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Molly. Drop it back there. That'd be brilliant. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, God can do amazing things. But sometimes, if we're honest, we forget. We forget. And so I want to ask a question today. And this uh, is the question. How big is your God? Deliberate wording. How big is your God? Okay, so keep that question in mind as we journey through both what we've done and where we're going. Okay, but we're going to watch uh, uh, an animation of our Bible story for today, uh, which is going to remind us of one of those amazing stories of what God can do. Now, if you want to follow it uh, in your Bibles or to open up an app, we'll, we'll pause for a moment for you to find it. It's in Acts 12. Okay, so Acts is after the Gospels. It's the, the next book that tells us the story of the work of the Holy Spirit in the church. Okay, um, so if you want to find that, the wording is close, but it's obviously not going to be the same, um, but it may help you. Okay, so Acts 12 is what you're looking for. Uh, and the first five verses are covered by about a sentence on the video, just so you know. And then the rest of it's picked up. Uh, and if you read it, you'll understand why from a child-friendly point of view. Okay, so Acts 12 is where we are, verse 1 to 17. And this is the animated version of that story. Slap. 
slapstick theater. Peter escapes from prison. This is Peter, hey who was one of Jesus' disciples. Yep. Peter told people about Jesus. There was a king named Herod who tried to stop anyone who tried to tell others about Jesus. He arrested Peter and took him to jail to be executed. While Peter was in prison, the people of the church prayed for him. The night before Peter was supposed to go to trial, he was sleeping. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord stood before him. The angel woke Peter up and said, Quick, get up. The chains fell off Peter's wrists. Whoa! Then the angel told him to get up and get ready to go and to follow him. So Peter left the cell, but all the time he thought was happening wasn't real and that it was just a vision. They passed by the guards, and when they came to the iron gate, it opened for them on its own. Wow! Awesome! They were walking through the street when the angel suddenly left him. Wait, what was happening? Peter finally realized that this was all really happening and that God had sent an angel to save him from what King Herod and the Jewish leaders had planned to do to him. Wow! He went to the home of Mary, where many believers were together praying. When Peter knocked at the door, a servant girl came to answer. Hey, uh, let me in! Peter! When she realized it was Peter, she was so excited that she ran inside to tell people instead of letting Peter in. Uh, I'm sure I her. It's Peter! The people inside thought the girl was wrong and said, it must be Peter's angel. But Peter kept knocking. When the people finally opened the door, they were amazed. Peter told them about what happened and all about how God sent an angel to rescue him from prison. Fabulous. Okay, now, uh, for those who are uh, sort of six or under, uh, if you'd find it helpful, there's uh, sheets which are relating to what we're talking about up the front. So if they're not focusing on what's going on, please do come down the front, do some coloring. Uh, you can talk about what's there. There's also a uh, foldy uh, idea. So you make one side and you draw a picture of, uh, the, of Peter being freed from the prison, and then you can open it up uh, to show that he has escaped. Uh, so do uh, come and engage with that if that's helpful to you. Uh, but for the rest of us, we're, we're going to uh, just explore the text a bit. And again, we're going to do that in an interactive way. So let's see how uh, closely you are listening. You've got Bibles around near you, so you're welcome uh, to use those. Uh, and Molly, again, will you be a runner for me? Okay. These aren't trick questions, okay? So go for the obvious. It's making sure that we've, we've picked up what's going on. So why was Peter put in prison? Okay, give us a wave. Someone, why was Peter put in prison? Because he was telling people about Jesus. Right, he was telling people about Jesus. Aren't we so fortunate in this country that we don't have to worry about that? Yeah, we don't have to worry that if we talk about Jesus, we're going to get put in prison. There's many countries around the world where that is the case. In fact, what was Herod planning to do to Peter? What was he going to do? Um, execute him. What does that mean, Barnaby? Um, we'll cut off his head. Cut off his head. There's a, the horrible histories version. Yeah, okay. So he, he was going to die because he'd spoken about Jesus. And it'd be easy again to think, oh, that's just what happened in those days, 2,000 years ago. But that still happens today. People talk about Jesus and they are threatened with death for doing it. How do you think that made him feel? How would that make you feel? A little bit of reflection. Okay. Someone other than Barnaby who's willing to share. Come on, we must know how we feel. Rachel, yeah, thank you. Scared. Scared, that's a good word. Yeah. Anxious, yeah. Any words online? Scared we've got again, absolutely. Yeah, anyone else? John, yeah. Head to Molly at the back. Oh. 
Wondering where God is. Wondering where God is. Absolutely. Terrified has been uh, put online as well. Absolutely, these are... We've got to be honest about this, haven't we? We can read these stories and make it a bit like, oh, he's, he's this amazing man, but if it's happening today, it could happen to us. Keep, keep with the mic. Okay, so you're not done yet. Uh, it, it could happen to us, and so it's worth us thinking about how right we feel. When the angel came to the prison cell, what was Peter doing? He was sleeping. He was sleeping. Right, okay. I don't know about you, but if you're terrified or scared or wondering where God is, sleep usually is not really there. Your brain is usually running at 100 miles an hour. Peter seems to be having some kind of peaceful sleep amongst all these guards, knowing that he's going to be killed. Strange. Uh, How did the church respond? How did the church respond? They were praying for him, so Peter was encouraged. Do you, think he, do you think he knew that the church was praying for him, Margot? I should imagine he would. Yeah, so his, his belief would be, they know I'm in trouble, so the church is going to pray. Yeah? Uh, and the church at this time is a group of people in a house somewhere who are probably frightened for their lives too. Yeah? Because if they're caught, it's all going to go terribly wrong. Okay, how, how, did, how did Peter escape then? What was his marvellous... Uh, Indiana Jones plan that he, he put into action. What did he do? How did he escape? Come on, please say you were listening. Thank you. The angel of the Lord. Right. So, so Peter actually didn't do anything. It, it was the angel of the Lord who, who came and did something. God had a plan. Peter might have had a plan, but we're not told what it is. Yeah, but he's surrounded by 16 soldiers. So I think his, his, his uh, chances when he's looking at it are, are not brilliant, are they? And he's behind an awful lot of gates and all sorts of things. That's right. So, so then Peter is saved by God in this miraculous way. That incidentally, there are stories about still happening today. Yeah? God is still working in these ways uh, today. What happened when Peter got to the house where the church were? I love this bit. Uh, not Barnaby. No, Barnaby, you're banned now. <laughs> I love that you're listening, and, but it's all age, and I don't want people to think it's just children age. Okay? So, and that, so I, I'd like others. Yeah, Carol. I, oh, no, you've been usurped by Sarah. Uh, he went to the house, knocked on the door, but um, the girl was so shocked, um, she didn't let him in. She just went back to tell the others. <laughs> yeah. That's quite comical, really, isn't it? It's like, it's Peter. I won't let him in. I won't tell everyone else. That's right. They didn't, absolutely, online, they didn't believe that he was, he was there. You, that, we can be a bit like that, can't we? Like, we pray about things, and then something happens, and we're like, nah. <laughs> or, hey, let me tell you what could have happened if I'd opened the door, because I think God was doing something, but I didn't, I didn't quite respond, because actually I wanted to tell you how amazing God uh, was. What did the believers eventually do when they saw Peter? Yeah, what, what did they do? Let's take one online. Who, who can? Let's, let's give them a chance. They have been responding, by the way. I've just not been picking them up. So what did, what did uh, the believers do when, uh, when they saw Peter? Yeah, they, thank you, Rebecca. They, they praised God. Absolutely. They, they rejoiced because God had answered their prayers. They had stepped out in faith. They were trusting a God who I would say for them was enormous. Yeah, when we ask that question, how big is your God? For them, they believed that he could rescue someone who was on death row. It's amazing, isn't it? It really is amazing. Thank you, Molly. That's great. Okay. I wonder if we still believe that God can do these amazing things today. How big is your God? And we do have to be careful because it could be easy for me to give you the impression that if we pray about something that we really want, God will give us it. we just got to pray harder. We've just got to have more faith. That will get God to respond because I believe God is massive. But that's not what we see in the Bible when we look at it in a wider context. One example is when Jesus is in the garden and he's facing his own death row. And he prays to God and he says, 
take this cup from me. Or in other words, Lord, if there's any other way to do this, please, I don't want to do this route unless it's your will. And he says, not my will, but your will be done. That's a tough thing to say. Because in our hearts, we might really, really, really want something, but actually, God may know better. And part of prayer is our ability to trust him, to do what he knows is right, and not what we think it's right. And yet, that should never stop us from praying big prayers. That should never stop us from coming before our big God and asking him about stuff and trusting that he will help us to learn what it is he wants. Now, I mentioned there's places around the country today where there's Christians treated just like Peter was. Uh, That word where they're treated like that is called persecution. Okay, it's when they're nasty and evil to people because they believe in Jesus. So we're going to do a little quiz, okay? And I'm going to, uh, it's, there's only three questions. And I'll be interested because these are some of the rules that exist in some of these countries. Um, and so see if you can work this out. If you're online, just post uh, A, B, or C to the answer, okay? And this is the first question. In which country... Is it risky to wear blue jeans? Okay, so I'm wearing blue jeans this morning. I've got blue jeans on. So in this country, it would be risky, as in risky like put in prison risky, to wear blue jeans. Is it A, North Korea, B, Sudan, or C, Vietnam? Chat with someone nearby. Have a quick... Okay, A, B, or C. What do you think? Blue jeans... Okay, if you think it's uh, A, raise your hand now. If you think it's B, that's just uh, four or five. If you think it's C, and that's one, two, three. Online, we have all A's and the online win. Okay, it is North Korea that there is a ban, not just on blue jeans, but on piercings, on hairstyles, including mullets, well, I don't think that's such a bad thing, Uh, uh, on long hair, you're not allowed to dye your hair, and when they talk about dyeing, they're talking about to brown. They're not talking about to a random other colour, brown, okay? And in fact, anything that links anyone with dressing like an American gets you put in prison, okay? That's the rule. And of course, America is seen as a Christian country as well. And so Christianity very much gets grouped in with that as to what places that it is risky to be a Christian, North Korea. Uh, incidentally, all these countries are risky to be a Christian, just to be clear. Okay, here's our second question. Arthur and Maureen, there's a problem here. Uh, where can you get in trouble for naming your daughter Sarah? Okay, where can you get in trouble for naming your daughter Sarah? Uh, is it A, Ethiopia? B, is that Laos? Is that right? Laos. Laos. See, I'm learning things this morning. There we go. And C, Morocco. Can do that one. Okay. Laos. 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 Okay, chat someone. Where can you get in trouble for naming your daughter Sarah? S-A-R-A-H. Okay. If you think it's A, Ethiopia, put your hands up now. Okay, one in the room, two in the room. There we go. Don't, no, stand strong. That's good. Okay, uh, Laos. Yeah, okay. If you think it's Laos, just because I can't say it, you will vote for it. Okay, and if you think it's Morocco. Okay, so the most votes in the room were for the B, the one I can't say. I think that's just to keep making me say it. Um, and online, uh, we've got B as well as our voting. Uh, in fact, it is C, Morocco. Yeah, okay. The problem with naming your child Sarah, spelt S-A-R-A-H in Morocco, is that it's too much like the Hebrew spelling. And therefore, the Moroccan government want people to be choosing names which link you to Morocco. You have a Moroccan identity, is what it says on their website. But just for your recovery, Sarah, if you spelt it S-A-R-A, that's fine. Okay, so if you ever move to Morocco, just change the spelling and you'll be fine. Or at least after a Maureen will be fine. That's okay. (laughs) Okay, last question. Here we go. 
Okay, in China, which of these will bring you to the attention of those in charge? In China, which of these? So there's uh, ordering a Bible online. There is uh, showing the bottom of your feet. There is wearing a green hat. Okay, which one is going to bring you to the attention of those in charge? Chat to someone or post online. David, I've tried to do my research the best I can. (laughs) We'll see. Okay. So if you think it is A, the Bible, then put your hand up. Okay, if you think it's B, showing the bottom of your feet. Okay, and if you think it's C, wearing a green hat. Okay, so I think, I think A and B were fairly equal. There were some people not quite uh, voting. Uh, we're, we're not quite sure. Let me just check. On. Say again. It's all of them, is it? Okay, online uh, we've got a mixture between A and uh, B. Okay, whilst all of them are uh, rude and uh, not uh, at all uh, socially acceptable, uh, the Bible is the answer. If you buy a Bible online, in fact, it's banned. You can't buy a Bible online in China today. Okay? In fact, you can't find an awful lot of biblical and Christian stuff online. It's been restricted. Um, And uh, I was even able to find an illustration. Apparently, a school Chinese textbook has had one of the Bible stories about Jesus showing love, grace, and kindness rewritten to instead illustrate the importance of law, order, and following rules. And churches over there face monitoring, leaders are questioned, put into prison, and under-18s aren't even allowed to attend a church activity. So if you're under-18 here, this wouldn't exist for you. Okay? China, today. The church needs our prayers. We have a big God. And so what I'm looking for, once again, is uh, for three people uh, to participate in this part of the service. This is time when we're going to pray. And we're going to use the Open Doors Junior Prayer Passport. Okay? Uh, and so in it, I'm going to ask each per- the person who comes up, and I'd, I'd like three people to participate, uh, to read out what is in the passport and then to offer a prayer on behalf of all of us uh, for that particular uh, country. Uh, so it would be great if I could have three people who are willing uh, to come forward, who are happy to read and uh, to pray, other than Barnaby and Molly. We'll put a limit on them. Of others, others, come on. We, we need to be praying for the, the, the church. Kiva, thank you. You coming up? David, thank you. Okay, Claire, that would be great. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay, so this is the bit where others can participate because you get the joy of trying to announce a name that they may pick. Ready? So I think there's 50. Is that right, David? If you just scroll to the end. 50? Okay, so there's 50. The number is 1 to 50. So someone uh, shout out for me one number. Fastest, number 10. What you got? Ah, there you go. It's on. Is this on? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Um, May we pray for Sudan. Father, we pray for the people of Sudan and South Sudan. But in Sudan, many Muslims think it makes them look bad if someone from their family decides to become a Christian. A new Christian might be kicked from out of his home, beaten up, killed. It is hard to get permission to build a church So some Christians have nowhere to meet together. Father, we lift up that country to you now and the Christians in Sudan. Mm. And we pray that there will be healing there. We pray for your oversight and for that terrible situation in Khartoum at the moment. Father, we know how big a God you are. We know how powerful you are. How you know how things will be and how you can heal all things. And we pray that you be close to all Christians in Sudan now, Father. In Jesus' lovely name, amen. Amen.
Amen. You didn't hear David say, that's the one I would have chosen as well. Isn't that great? Another number. Oh, sorry. 28 was what I heard. Yeah, 28. Niger. Let's pray for Niger. Holy Spirit, please be with the Christians in Niger. Father God, we pray that for the, all the people that live in that country who are suffering because the violent groups have taken over parts of the country. Lord, we thank you that you are God. And even though these groups want everyone to be Muslims and are attacking Christians and burning down churches, we ask for your mercy. We pray that Christians will know your protection and your hope. We pray, Father God, for all those people who are Christians who feel that they're being bullied by the violent groups in Niger. Father, we pray for your peace to be on that country and that they may know that you are God despite this persecution. Amen. 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 Sarah, you shouted a number. What was it? No. Number one, we had down here, sorry. Number one, Claire. North Korea. <laughs> okay. Okay. Heavenly Father, be with everybody in North Korea. It is one of the most dangerous places in the world, as you know. So, Lord, we really hold them up to you. Um, Heavenly Father, we, we actually pray for Kim Young, Jung Young. Jung Young. Um, he wants everybody to believe that he is God, Lord. Please let him see the error of his ways and so that he can protect his country so that they can freely worship you, Lord. Lord, there is great persecution there. They're not allowed to read the Bible, sing, pray, or do anything that shows that they're a Christian, Lord. Protect those Christians that are hiding there. And... Um, if, if they are arrested, just be with them within that prison. And, and I just want to pray for miracles that they are released, Lord. Heavenly Father, it says there's 400,000 Christians in North Korea, and we just lift every single one of them up to you now. Mm. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. That's great. How big is our God? He's the one that we can come before with prayers of all types. And he's the God who wants to hear from you. Please don't ever think he doesn't want to hear from you. We have such a privilege in this country to be able to talk about Jesus. And so often we don't. Because we're scared. Sometimes it's okay. It makes sense that it's not the right time to talk about Jesus. I understand that. That's not what I'm talking about. It's that opportunity where we choose not to because we're scared. Let us be encouraged by our persecuted brothers and sisters. That even in spite of what might happen to them, they choose to speak of Jesus. When you came in, uh, you should have, hopefully. Uh, I saw the team doing it. I've been given a strip of paper, okay, um, and this is our response to what's been uh, going on. If you, if you haven't got one, uh, then uh, please just wave and we'll uh, sort that out. We can cut some more if we need to. Um, but what we're going to do, uh, very simply, is we're going to make a prayer chain, okay? So, and the, the idea is that on this piece of paper, I want you to take a moment to think about what your big prayer is right now. It may be that you have to. It may be that there's something personal and it may be that there's something for a country or something going on in the world. But I want you to either to draw or to write uh, just maybe a word. You don't have to write the whole thing um, on your bit of paper and do it prayerfully, please. Take, take your time. If you've, uh, please encourage the children to get involved in this part uh, so that uh, we're all uh, praying uh, together. And then in a moment, we're going to sing together. And uh, if two or three people would help just make a paper chain whilst we're singing, uh, that would be really great. 
Um, so if you're online, as always, uh, please post uh, your prayers, if you're comfortable to, in the comments, and we will make sure that they're added into the prayer chain. In a number of countries, the idea of gathering like we are gathering is totally alien. Okay? Even four or five people gathering uh, could bring attention to them and they could get arrested uh, and put in prison and uh, put into re-education camps and such alike. To stand in uh, solidarity with our, our brothers and sisters, I, I want us to sing a hymn, which I know they do sing, um, Amazing Grace. Okay? We're singing the traditional version of Amazing Grace. There's four verses uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to sing it as quietly as we possibly can. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to sing like we are in secret hiding. And we want to praise God, but we've got to do it in a way where we won't get hurt. Okay, so your competition is really, can you sing quieter than the person near you? Okay, if you're online, the microphones will still come through for you. Uh, and obviously the words will change so you know where we are uh, in the sequence uh, Callum may even be able to lift the level such that you might be able to hear us doing it. If he achieves that, then we're probably not singing quite enough. Um, so we're, ge- we're going to sing. Sarah's going to give us the first two notes of Amazing Grace, and then we're just going to uh, sing it through. So it, right now, is we're trying to be as still and quiet as we can. If we have the verse first up. stillness I just want you to look at the prayers which are now on that chain on the table and just privately in the quiet offer your prayer to the Lord
Thank you that you're a big God. Thank you that we can offer big prayers. But we do pray, yet not what I will, but what you will be done. Amen. So you've written it on a chain which will be up in the church building, but you now need to write it somewhere where you can take it away as well. Um, again, if you want to go all out with the open doors practice, then get a piece of uh, toilet paper because that's how they pass Bible verses to one another. They write a Bible verse on toilet paper, they pass it, and then they flush it away when they've memorized it. And one bit, we just I have to tell you this, one bit which scared me, there was a, there was a, a country where there was a shortage of Bibles, uh, and so to get access to a Bible, you had to be able to recite the whole of a Psalm 119 to prove that you were serious. Off by heart. Quite amazing, isn't it? The difference in their expectation than maybe we have. As we land today and think about our big God, we're going to sing uh, a song. We're going to teach you a song, actually, uh, to finish with. This is a, uh, a new song, but it's very catchy. And it's got some actions if you want to do them. Uh, Mike, can we have the lyrics up for the start? Okay. Uh, so this is, there's, um, the first verse has two lines, and it repeats it over and over again in just changing the words slightly, and the actions change just slightly. So we're just going to teach you the first line, which says, nothing's too big, big, big for his power. Nothing's too little, little for his care. So it's like scissors going across a flat hand. Uh, so BSL for care. Okay, so should we try that together? Nothing's too big, big, big for his power. Nothing's too little, little for his care. Okay, and then that's basically the same thing. They change the direction and how they do it. And there's someone on the video who you'll be able to see doing that. So let's go over to the next slide. You can come on up, learn with us. Absolutely, Jonathan. Yeah. You coming as well, Sammy? Come on, yeah. Okay, this is easy. He's the God of the big... God of the little, God of the stuff, somewhere in the middle. Yeah, that will stick in your mind, won't it? Somewhere in the middle. He's the king of moving mountains. So you've made a mountain and it moves. And he loves you more than you will ever know. Okay, do that again. So he is the God of the big, God of the little, God of the stuff, somewhere in the middle, the king of moving mountains, loves you more than you will ever know. And then we get back to verse 1 and 2. There's another bit, you'll pick it up because it uses the same actions, okay? It's an earworm. It's intentional, right? So you walk away remembering we have a great big God. Okay, let's stand together. And uh, run the video. There's a bit of dancing for those who really want to do it at the start. Okay, here we go. Thanks, Mike. Can we have it even louder? Hey. Otherwise, we'll not see it. Go. Nothing's too big, big, big for his power. Nothing's too little, little for his care. Can we have it louder? Nothing's too really, really for his care. Nothing's too big, big, big for his power. And nothing's too easy, easy for his care. Nothing's too big, big, big for his power. And nothing's too teeny, teeny for his care. He is the God of the big, God of the little, God of the suffering, somewhere in the middle. The king of the moving mountains loves you more. 
Fantastic. Well done. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Can we go back to our question just to finish with? Go back to our slide. Second slide, third slide. So what will your big prayer to our big God be starting this week? So that's not just this week, just this week. It's going forwards. What will your big prayer to our big God be starting this week? Let me pray for us all. Thank you, Lord, for this time to worship together so freely. Thank you for your amazing grace and your love for us. Thank you that you are a big God who can do amazing things. As we get out of this place and go to our front lines wherever you send us, may we carry you and follow you and find you in those places. And may we continue to offer big prayers to our big God in all things. Amen. Amen.